Welcome everyone to Stellaris Eterna Episode 1. At the beginning of our spacefaring empire, we were led by Pharaoh Makenotep, and we decided with our rituals that new Osiris would be elevated every ten years in a ritual of elevation. Shortly after our spacefaring empire began, the crown prince Sukothet Inriki Tekomet has been named heir to the throne by the pharaoh. It did not take long for our first science vessel to be released from its moorings and sent on its mission to search the stars. The name of this ship? The RHS Kentep. In the ninth month of Makenotemp's reign, the first steps into the tradition of scientific discovery were embraced by our civilization. We also took on the tradition in the first year of To Boldly Go, giving our explorers new vigor to see the sights of our galaxy and to find our gods. In the fifth month of the first year, we found an unusual crystal formation during enduring the heat of a star, hiding in its corona. When exposed to solar radiation, it created new frequencies and strange light patterns. It was decided that these new frequencies and light patterns would be sent back to our artists, so they may be inspired by the beauty of the galaxy to encourage our people to work better. In 2201, the seventh month, and the 21st day, the Sulemi civilization was encountered in the Gethrika system on the planet of Jurg Safrand. We discovered that the Sulemi, a fungoid race, were known to be skilled traders and a love of haggling for a good deal, though they were found to be still in their stone age. In the 11th month of the first year, we decided to empower our science divisions, aiding them in or better organization, and created a special division to increase the rate that new scientists were raised up. In the twelfth month of the first year, the RHS Hecatep was caught in the eye of a massive storm on the gas giant of Axilia IV. In the second year, eleventh month, we had embraced a new form of education called Polytech Education, greatly improving the learning capabilities of our citizens. In the sixth month of the third year, the HSS Hecatep was freed with the aid of two other science vessels using alternating shield frequencies, though the RHS Hecatep do not remember what occurred to them inside the storm they were recalled back to our home planet for further debriefing. About six months later, we decided that perhaps the sciences and religion are not too dissimilar, incorporating the scientific methods into our faith to allow them to both improve and grow in equal measure. It was decided in the fourth year in the sixth month of the first reign that we would send our ground forces out to the Salemi civilization on Jurg Safrand, so that way we may bring the enlightenment of Osiris to them. Not five months later, we accomplished our goals on Jurg Safrand and brought the Salemi into an age of enlightenment blessed by great Osiris. Not one month after that, the twelfth month of the fourth year, we discovered the Tendrakian civilization on the planet of Ro-Kabur in the Rothier system. The Tendrakian are a long-lived reptilian race that favor understanding how things are put together and taken apart, which we have seemed to discover them while they were still in their Iron Age. Early in our fifth year of our explorations, we discovered an odd mountain range on the southern hemisphere of Rothier V. And about five months later, we discovered that the giant mountains that we found on Rothier V 
turned out to be a colossal alien skeletal life form that dated back to 3.4 billion years ago. And we determined that this planet could not support life of that size. Our scientists are greatly intrigued by this, and our philosophers continue to debate, could this be the life that the gods left behind? With the trouble we've been having with Jurg Safrand, we decided to install overseers on every planet, so that way our proper education of their civilization can continue unabated. Through Osiris's great blessings and the hard work of our great hegemony, we have been granted by Osiris technological ascendancy, enabling our scientists to redouble their efforts to gain knowledge about the universe in his name and to one day find the gods. After working for so long on our sciences, we decided to embrace more and I focus on prosperity, on material goods, so that way our lives of our Osiri could be greatly improved. Not a few months later, in our eighth year, we decided that perhaps the Rokhaber planet needed our presence. So we began our invasion of the Tendrakian civilization to bring them under our banner, which not three months later, we succeeded, and an overseer was quickly installed. Towards the end of the eighth year, we discovered the Hufrian civilization encountered on Luthia III in the Luthia system. The Hufir are a long-lived fungoid race that favors their traditions and to repeat the past, so that way they could learn from their ancestors. We have discovered them in their Stone Age. In the middle of our ninth year, we have finally achieved planetary unification because we cannot let petty differences between our people distract us from the goals of finding the gods and bringing them home or becoming the new gods ourselves. Towards the middle of the ninth year, we began our elevation ceremony preparations on Abydos to create new Osiris. Aspirants who are considered worthy will be granted the honor of becoming the next generation of Osiri. Our tenth year of our glorious head ceremony was christened with the birth of more Osiri, and then we began the enlightenment of the Hoferian civilization. With them brought into our fold, we decided shortly afterwards that perhaps we can use our newly enlightened species to settle on planets that the aspirants and the Osiri are not normally comfortable living on. With this newfound fervor and a desire for haste, our engineers discovered starship afterburners by some Osiri who decided that they need to get somewhere faster with Ra's blessing. With these new people joining our hegemony, we decided that certain political factions were necessary. The Anubi Coalition and the Rayan Superiority Movement were founded as political parties in our hegemony to advise the Pharaoh on proper actions to aid our glorious empire. With these two initial factions that were founded, a third, more enlightened faction came forward. The Blessed of Osiris came to guide our people in spiritual beliefs to make sure they were on the right path. Not long after the Blessed of Osiris came into being, it was decided that robotic workers should be outlawed, as false life is an affront to Osiris and Anubis. In the twelfth year, in the fifth month, new hydroponics farming methods were showcased at a science expo. These farming methods will now help us produce greater yields of crops and improved quality of our sustenance. During this time, it was decided that perhaps the accumulation of wealth should no longer be considered an undesirable trait in our people, so long as it does not consume their spirit 
and go against the blessings of Osiris and the other gods. In the middle of the 13th year, we discovered a crashed alien ship that was millions of years old. Most of it was, for the most part, destroyed, and our engineers and scientists took great pains into looking into it, finding out all of its secrets. They were able to find a working engine in it, and thus we have discovered ion thrusters. After some careful and painstakingly slow research into the ship's computer system, we discovered the Voltram Star Assembly that had existed millions of years ago. Our people desire to know the answer to what happened to those who came before, so we do not repeat their mistakes and see if perhaps they were also blessed by our gods. Towards the beginning of our 18th year, we discovered our first space-capable intelligent life. We're going to watch them very closely to make sure that they are not a threat to our people and to our way of life. In the 20th year of our great hegemony, we have finally mapped the genetic genome. We have begun utilizing it to great effect to improve the health of our citizens, both of Sairi aspirants, as well as to encourage the aspirant reproduction rate. While scouting, our science vessels encountered some sort of strange space-born alien race. We are going to look into them to decide if they were a threat or not. But who knows, perhaps they could be useful. We are not certain yet. With great thought and debate on the subject, our military minds develop a way to relocate individuals to other planets while preparing for an invasion, so that less lives are lost when we enlighten those people. In the 23rd year, the third month of our great exploration, a company known as Tosis Arms has created an interesting new weapon. Before, we had lasers, but they developed a new version of lasers, which does significantly more damage than our previous variant, and it comes out a delightful azure color. Upon our continued research into the biology of the amoebas, we decided that they are fascinating creatures and do not warrant extermination. That is not necessary. We decided we're going to study them like any other natural being and see what we can learn from their biology. In the 23rd year, the nine month, we finally received a decrypted transmission from the Sandralin Republic colonies. While we do have some similar aspects, they do not respect our beliefs and they prefer to have the false life walk among them almost as equals. This is a perversion. This is against the natural order, and we must deal with them. Perhaps we can convince them of the error of their ways. If a talking does not work with them, and we cannot educate them on the proper path, then more aggressive methods may be required. The following year, we decided to establish a spy network inside the Sandrell and Republic colonies to learn more about them, as the fact that they respect false life makes them dubious to accept and more likely to lie to us. So we figured a hidden agent will get more of the truth than what they will say out of their two-faced mouths. Unfortunately, not long after we sent that agent to their colonies, they got heavily influenced by their ideals and we were forced to recall this agent for retraining to make sure he never strays from the path ever again. Now hopefully this students has been a good first lesson for you. I hope you have learned quite a bit about the Sancrosanct hegemony in its early days, if you will. Please come back for your next lesson. Perhaps I will have more delectable treats laid out for you. Until then, May Osiris continue to bless you upon your path. Good day.